Hey everybody, it's Ms. Dietrich helping you on proportional reasoning. Number 9 reads, to stay properly hydrated, a person should drink 32 fluid ounces of water for every 60 minutes of exercise. How much water should Damon drink if he rides his bike for 135 minutes? Alright, I've highlighted some of the things we need to pay close attention to and I've also color coded this a little bit. The two units that we're dealing with here in this problem are fluid ounces, so I labeled the top of our, we call this a proportion by the way, we're going to label the top of our proportion with fluid ounces. In other words, both our numerators are going to be talking about fluid ounces. And let's have the bottom of our proportion be talking about minutes. So if we take these first two numbers, which are 32, which is fluid ounces, we'll put that here. And the minutes we'll put down here. So now the next question you have to ask yourself, where do I put this? 135. The answer to that question is you have to pay attention to the units. We're talking about minutes. So remember, the denominator we said was going to be talking about minutes, so we'll put it down here. All right, we have a couple options. We're going to solve for fluid ounces, so how about we use the variable f? All right, a couple options that we have here once we get to this point is we can, uh, of course, we can just use cross products and do the 35 times 135. So I just want to show you that approach first. I'm going to show you how you might consider reducing this as another method which is the method that the textbook is su suggesting that you use. All right, so if we do our cross products, let's take this number and multiply it by this number. 135 times 32. And the number we get is this number right here. And then, of course, that's going to equal 60F. That equals 60F because that's the other cross product right here. Now, if we use what we know about algebra, the opposite of multiply a variable by 60 is to divide it, and we show that with the division bar. All right, so we have this value already in the calculator, and we're just going to now divide that by 60. And we get 72 as an answer. So F equals 72. Now, you might find it easier to simplify this ratio first, so I want to explore that for a moment. And we already know the answer is 72. So we'll leave that there. Let me erase all this stuff here and show you how you might simplify ahead of time. And we'll move this out of the way. Okay. Now if we simplify this left ratio, um, you might recognize, for example, uh, 2. You might think realize that that goes into it. 4 might go into it. And if you don't know, you know how many times it goes in, we can use the calculator. So let's do 32 divided by 4, which you should know that in your head. That's 8. And let's do 60 divided by 4. And we get 15. So in other words, if we simplify that ratio, we're going to get 8 fifteenths. So 8 fifteenths equals something over 135. Now, if this looks easier to you than what we originally did, then that you might like that approach better. And then you would still proceed with either figuring out how many times 15 goes into 135 and take that same number and multiply it by the 8, or to do the cross products. Do 8 times 135, come up with a number, and then divide it by 15 to get the answer. In fact, when it, since we have a little bit of time left on the, uh, the clock here, let's go ahead and show that. So 8 times 135. In that case, we get this number, right, as a cross product. Now, if we divide that number by 15, because the other cross product would be 15F, we should get the same thing. Something happened there. Let me try again. 1080 divided by 15 equals. All right, and notice that we get the same thing we got before, 72. So you have to decide, is it going to be easier to simplify the ratio and then go forward or not? Either way, we'll get you the right answer.